Well, once the recording is allowed, you can start. Okay, so you think we should go on? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, Papa Kosa, you are welcome. Yes, Thank you, sir. I think today the, the network will favor us. Today the network, you know, and then maybe can grab at them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll share with the <clears throat> and then I introduce you properly. I think yesterday we couldn't do it properly because of the okay. network. So um, let's share the prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to prepare ourselves towards the pending exams which are ahead of us because of the calling you have placed on us. We ask you lead us all. Father, grant our facilitator all that he needs, the strength, and everything that will enable him to teach us all. We also pray that you grant us the grace to understand and to reapply it whenever the time comes. In Jesus' name we pray thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, my dear brothers Amen. and sisters, we are fortunate to have Reverend George Kosa to be our facilitator for the New Testament um, uh, classes. He is a Reverend Minister, PCG. Usually, we priest, Presbyterian ministers are those who are on. And then, currently, he's around the Makati Hill area under the Ga West Presbytery. Um, as for the rest, I will, I will leave it for another day. So he's the one to come, you is the one to lead us through. Um, I think we have about three to four weeks for this session. So please, let's do our very much best to pay attention and then to contribute as much as possible. Um, he's, he's good academically and good practically. So whichever way, your questions can be put to him, and then he will help you go through. Uh, Papa Kosa. Yes, sir. Yes. So you are welcome. Uh, we have one man named. Thank you, Papa. We have one person named Jabas Samuel Yao. That I know he's eager to okay. see. Okay. Um, because of what will be happening next month. I see. Uh huh. So I know he's eager to see you and eager to have discussions with you. So I'm going to give you, let you be the host so that you can share your slides as well. So okay, you are welcome. Please, um, let's welcome Papa George Kosa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, let me hear the finger. Right. Hello, Papa. George, <laughs> please, you are welcome. Hello. Thank you. Eee, Papa, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, once prayer has been said, we don't need to stay back on any discussions again. And so I will quickly move to the issues that we have to do. So yesterday, uh, thankfully, Papa stood in um, when my network wasn't um, favoring me. And so um, I have listened to some of the audios that were shared on the page. I think that Papa did um, a good job, an excellent one, of course, in taking you through um, the, the, the introductions to the uh, New Testament, and so he took you through some of the back, part of the background, and then Papa uh, spoke about um, the parables. Uh, there were some sort of discussions. I listened to all of your contributions on the parables, and then um, on the issue of miracles and the divisions um, in the New Testament. Now, since this is about the examination that we are writing. I will just make a quick recap of what you did, and then we will continue from there. Um, in the meantime, I have shared some two documents on your page. So that's on the WhatsApp platform. And so later, you may take it with, with time. I'll be sharing portions of it in the course of the study so that you find your feet on what we are doing here. 
So um, yesterday, from where I ended, I was talking about the 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 background of the New Testament written in the Greco Roman world. We know that the New Testament canon was actually put in place around the sixty to seventy BC. 70 to 70, uh, 60 to 70 uh, CE, common era, right? So after the death of um, Jesus, uh, 60 to 70 years after, that was when the compilation started. Now, I mentioned that we have four major divisions in the New Testament, and by extension, five. There may be other books and stuff that you find, oh, there are six, there are seven, the other ones, but... Um, from a, a theological study perspective, there are four major divisions, and by extension, five in any biblical study material you find. Now, uh, the four, please pay attention to this one. They are the key part of the New Testament Bible. The first one is the gospel. The second one, the acts of the apostles. The third one is the epistles or the letters. And then the last one is the apocalypse or the revelation. Now we say by extension five because that of the epistles, they are classified into two, the Pauline epistles and then the general epistles. Pauline epistles and general epistles. So better say, let's put it in five. We have the gospels. We have the acts of the apostles. We have the Pauline epistles. We have the general epistles. And then we have that of the Apocalypse or the Revelation. Now, let me go to the Gospels. When we talk about the Gospel, we're talking about the message of salvation of Jesus Christ. Everything we are doing there is about the personality of Jesus. We are doing that through his birth. We are doing that through uh, his ministry. We are doing that through the sacrificial death. We are doing that through the resurrection and the era of the Holy Spirit. And those are the things that are captured in the Gospels. Now, it is out of the Gospel that all other activities in the New Testament and thereafter ensued. And so it is the coming of Christ that brought the context or the actual part of the New Testament. And so to put it this way, everything started with the Gospel and then other activities of the early church also came up. And that is why we have the Acts of the Apostles. In other words, activities of the Apostles. I'm sure most of you are always used to, oh, Act of the Apostles. Act. The tree is very correct. When the tree says, Asma Funenuma, it is the activities or um, that of the uh, ABSSC Bible, which says that uh, the works of the apostles. That is how it has termed it. So it is the act of the apostles, the activities of the apostles, how they did their things. And that brought the actual church that today we find ourselves now. And so starting from the gospel again, um, we have the gospel in two forms. We have what we call the synoptic gospels. And then we have the Johannine literature. When we talk about the word synoptic, optic means size. For those of you with little science background, you know that optics, we are talking about size. And so synoptics, same optic or same view or same sight. Basically, that is what we are looking at. We are looking at same sight, same view or same observation. So when we talk about... Um, Synoptics, these are recordings about Jesus and his ministry, his birth, growth, ministry, everything. And these are the perspectives of three different people. And that is why for Matthew, we say the gospel according to St. Mark, not Mark's own gospel, but the gospel according to St. Mark. When we talk about Mark, we talk about the gospel according to St. Mark, but not Mark's gospel. The only we talk about um, that of Luke, we say the gospel according to St. Luke, the gospel as captured by a particular person. 
Now, those ones, they all wrote about Jesus and his ministry, but they wrote it from different perspectives. They wrote them from different perspectives. And that is why we call them the synoptic, same optic or same view. All right? The same issue that they have all brought, even though they are from different perspectives. You take um, the story of um, the temptation of Jesus Christ after the period of 40 days fasting. You read that one in Matthew chapter 4. You go to the other um, um, the Gospels, and some of them, I think the Matthew Gospel concept is about eight verses. You go to some of the other ones, and it's just about two or three verses. And so the distinctions are clear. It also talks about the interest of the one who is recording. Okay, it talks about the interest of the one who is also recording. And so all those ones are things that we will be taking note of as we progress with our study of the New Testament. Now, interestingly, when we talk about um, the synoptics, we are also looking, apart from the story of Jesus' birth and ministry, we are looking at the teachings of Jesus through the use of parables. And so we are going to look at all the parables of Jesus. We are going to look at all the parables of Jesus. All the parables of Jesus. We are going to look at all of them. We are going to look at all of them. And then we will discuss them one by one. We are looking at uh, the uh, significance of those items to us. We are looking at um, um, how they can be applied. And we are looking at how it is impacting uh, we are looking at how it is impacting or affecting the life of the today's Christian. And so we are looking at how it is applicable. We are looking at its relevance. We are looking at at that time when it was said, what was the meaning? And then we are also looking at it from a social point of view. How is it reflecting in society? How is it benefiting society? And so all those ones are coming into play once or we, as we continue to do it. Um, the the synoptic gospels. Please tell the baby to sleep. It's 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 late. It's late. Eight time. Boka tell the baby to All right. So let me continue. And so um, we have in all different um, parables that were given by Jesus. It is also important that at this stage, you would have an idea of all the parables of Jesus. You know, it's almost about 46 parables. It's almost about 46 parables. The new cloth and an old uh, coat, uh, new wine in old wine skin, lamp on a stand, wise and foolish builders, money lender forgives on equal debt, lamp on a stand, rich man foolishly builds bigger bands, servant must remain watchful, wise and foolish servant on fruitful fig tree, Sewer and the four types of soil. Yesterday, Papa took you through. I, I enjoyed the discussion, actually, when I listened this morning. Weeds among good plants, that's the kingdom of heaven. Growing seed, also in kingdom of heaven. The mustard seed, about the kingdom of heaven. And the yeast, also about the kingdom of heaven. The hidden treasure and the valuable pearl. The fishing net, owner of a house. All those ones are about the kingdom of God. And then lost sheep, the story of the lost sheep. The sheep the gate and the shepherd, uh, the master and the servant, or merciful servant, the good Samaritan, friend in need, lowest seat, and there is an invitation to all those ones are there. All those ones are there. The lost coin, the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son is one interesting part. Those of you who have read the SMT past questions, you see that most of the year they bring that story of the prodigal son. It looks like most people do not get the interpretations right. Uh, uh -huh. We interpret it to see it's mostly the, the program that we are doing. And when it's time for evangelism, we read part of it, then we interpret it in our own way. But it has its own theological underpinnings. With time, we'll be discussing, we'll be learning those ones. The shoe manager, the rich and uh, the rich man and Lazarus, workers in the vineyard. I have actually shared what I'm saying on the WhatsApp platform. And so all of you would have access to it. I have shared it there so that you can all have access to it. And so uh, once you, you, you go there, 
you find this one there. Okay, so I guess I can continue. Papa, please, are you sharing the screen? Uh, I was trying to share on your screen, but I'm not getting it through. Papa, don't worry there. Papa, I'm don't worry there. Yes, I'm okay, here. Can you, make, can you please make me a host so that I can share on the uh, oh, screen? You have already made you a host. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I told you earlier. Okay, I'm trying to share something, but it's not going through. Oh, I shall. Yeah. I'll try again, let's see. Um, okay, Papa, well, you know what? Um, 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 um. But kindly share for me. I have placed it on the um, WhatsApp platform. Oh, let me share. And so, for what I have said, there I have all the parables in the chronological order. Uh, ones that I have to break them down, breaking them down where you find them in Matthew, where you find them in Mark, where you find them in Luke. I have indicated all of them at the same time. All right, so there on your screen, you have it there. Right there on your screen, it's there. I'm sure you can all see it now. Okay, so I'm sure you can all see it now. Yes, Papa, please, yes, we can see clear. it now. Aha, uh -huh. so you have about 46 of them. Uh, some of them, they are related. Some are about the kingdom of God. Some are about deep, the shepherd and the sheep. And so different aspect of it. Please take time, read the parable, understand the parable. I don't need you to get it um, in the way it has been arranged. In fact, it will be difficult to do that. But try to understand every parable, what it means, why it was said, what are the significance, and how one can apply it into his or her life. Most of the questions they had is that, oh, so and so is happening in society. Can you use this parable to explain uh, what the Christian should do or what should be the Christian position based on the parable said by Jesus? And so please, please, the person whose TV is on, can you lower the volume? All right, thank you. And so you will try and then get all those ones right. Um, a lot has been put up on that one. Please try and get it right. Let me give an example. Um, on the uh, on the story of um, um, the prodigal son. Yes, let me look at the prodigal son for instance. Luke fifteen, eleven to thirty two. You know, we don't have that one in uh, Matthew. Neither do we have it in um, Mark. That is a bit of um, a unique one on its own. But the most important thing is that you must understand what it stands for. You must understand what it stands for. And so this is someone who stayed with the father, got up and said, I am going to live my life. And so he left. He went on a far off. Then later, when things got worse, he returned and came back to the father. Some common mistakes we do when we are trying to narrate this parable in examination. One entrance exam uh, question paper I once marked. And then uh, the person was trying to write about this um, story of the prodigal son. And then he says that well, at some point, the boy began to eat the food of the pigs. And I was taken aback. The boy never ate the food given to the pigs. But the boy had in mind that he, he, he had in mind that he should eat some. But he never did. It was a conception. And so we need to, when we want to read their stories, we must read them well, understand them. Let's get that one clear. And then let's look out for the, uh, the meaning of those ones. I will share another document with you on the meaning of the 
parables, the meaning of all the parables, so that um, now that we have about the exams is in is it October or November, and so basically you have about some two three months you spend time in your leisure time. Those of you who have been traveling for work, where you sit in the car and then you are going in the morning, you can be reading through if you have it on your phone. In your leisure time at the office, those of you who are teaching when school closes, you can be reading them. And then those of you who are, I mean, whatever you do, when you have time, then you'll be reading through some of them and then you get what the actual parables are about. Now, aside the use of parables, every one of the authors in the three synoptics concern itself with a particular thing. When you look at Matthew, Matthew gave a different perspective of the person and the ministry of Jesus. Matthew focuses much on the history. Matthew focuses again on some of the issues that happened, but it is a general narrative that Matthew has done. When you look at that of Luke, at that of Mark, yes, that of Mark, the book by John Mark. He has also written the, basically on the miracles that happened. The parables are there. Some of the other stories are there. But his major emphasis has been on the miracles that Jesus performed. A lot of them have been captured in that one. When you talk about Luke, parables are there, but he also emphasized on the teachings. Now, uh, all these three put together, on different accounts, but about the same gospel, gives us what we call the synoptic gospel. Like I said, same view or same direction, looking at it from one different angle. And so that is about the synoptic gospels. When you go to the, uh, the last of the gospels, which is of course on its own, they all form the gospel, but there are two divisions. And so the second a division in the gospel, that is the Johannine literature. And that is the gospel according to St. John. In John's accounts, John does not spend so much time talking about uh, history, talking about um, uh, miracles, talking about a lot of things. John goes straight and John focuses on the things, on the person, one, and the things that Jesus or what Jesus means. And so in John, Jesus is more of used as a symbolic um, sort of language. He expressed, uh, he described Jesus in different forms. John described Jesus in different forms, right from his birth, growing up and everything. John brings out who Jesus is. John ideally brings out who Jesus is. And that is the difference it makes with the other ones. The other ones give the raw account, but John gives us what it implies and who Jesus is. As a part of uh, the, the history that he gives, he didn't talk about his birth and everything, but he tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And, the, uh, and, 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 and he, was in the, he was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him. And apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. So life is in him. Everything, 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 everything. John gives that account and that description. And so for John, everything is about Jesus and Jesus is everything. And that is why in John's gospel, we find the story of, oh, uh, Jesus is uh, the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the living water. Jesus is uh, the, the, the resurrection. Jesus is the, uh, I mean, a lot of things that John gives. For John, he, he gives his testimony about Jesus. Unlike the other ones that are giving us the report or the account of what happened, John is giving us his own uh, uh, his own uh, description of Jesus, the person Jesus, who he is. That is the distinction. And that is why it is not 
or it is different from the other three. I'm sure your, your attention might have come to a lot of things that he has written. I am the bread of life. When people are thirsty, he says, this, I am the living water. When he says that, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When somebody is dead, he says that, oh, I am the resurrection. You know, he says, I, I, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man, John chapter 15. And so he goes on and on and on and on to tell us a different part of it. And so those are key issues we can have when we talk about the gospel. Now, when we go to the story of, um, or the book of um, Acts, like I've said, we can, if you don't want to simply say Acts, you can say the activities of the apostles. Almost all the book writers have shortened it to the Acts, but basically you're looking at the activities of the apostles. And so here, as we all know, it was also written by Luke. It was also written by Luke. The same uh, medical doctor wrote that one too. And here he chronicles life after the death of Jesus. He chronicles life after the death of Jesus. So whilst they were guarded out of fear and um, anxiety and everything, uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Before then, when Jesus had appeared to them, they saw him being taken away from the one. Uh, ye men of little faith, why, ye men of Galilee, why do you stand here watching into the skies? The same Jesus as you see him, uh, the same way will he come again. And blah, 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 blah. And then when you go to the chapter 2, we find the spirit of the Lord coming upon the people. Chapter 3, where the declaration, they speak, a lot of people give their lives. And all that, and all that, and all that, that happened. And everything that happened in the book of Acts of, of the Apostles. Technically, the book of the Acts of the Apostles is the story of the early church. It is the story um, that has become the heritage of the church. Our traditions and everything, most of them are founded from that one. Even though uh, in the other epistles, we get most of the practices and the teachings of the church there. But the book of uh, Acts tells us a lot of things that we need to know as a church and as Christians. And that is why it's important for every Christian to ideally understand what the book of Acts is about. Basically, uh, uh, we start with the story of um Jesus' ascension. We go to the Pentecost story. We go to the healing of the lame man. Remember that silver and gold we do not have such as we have is what we give you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I'm sure you should be able to, be able to interpret. And if you are asked how it applies in our life, you should be able to get the stories and everything right, the narrative. Even for Peter is arrested, he faces the Sanhedrin and everything. Don't forget that the, that chapter is very important. That is what we talk about. Um, um, Peter challenging them, asking them, "Is it right for us to listen to um, the, the 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 chiefs and the 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 priests and the governors and those people rather than listening to God?" And it is in that same area that um, they talk about. Um, uh, there is no name given on earth or in heaven through which man might be saved. And so they are pers being persecuted ideally for the person that they have healed. In chapter 5, uh, we talk, we see the Ananias story and then uh, where he lied and all those things came. And then we also see the apostles doing more signs and wonders and then they coming out of prison and then the, still the trial goes on. Um, one is chosen to come and then uh, serve with them in chapter 6. Stephen's sermon is found in chapter 7. We find um, the patriarchs of Egypt also there. We find the expansion of the church, saw the persecutor and all those ones from the chapter 8. And all and all and all the Damascus would experience in chapter 9. We find the story of... I am sure that when you take your Bibles, you will know all these ones and you understand them better. You being uh, presbyters, um, group leaders, YPG, and you have president and big men in the church. These are stories that I know you already know. And so you need to master them to know what they are. 
we'll come back and come and look at the relevance of all these parts that we are talking about. Then from the act of the apostles, okay, well, I think let me pause here. We're talking about the gospels, we're talking about the act of the apostles. I wanted to take questions, but I think I'm compelled to move on a little. So that I just take the time. It's around 8.31, so we have more time. So I'll come back and then come and take those questions. But if I see a hand up, I'll call you so that you can ask the question. In case I find any hand up, I'll call the person so that you can also ask your question. And so if you want to ask questions, you can just show by hand. Or if you want to write in the chat room to our um, I will show it there. I've seen people written. I can't see the screen. Oh, I made Papa share it. Besides, it is also on the WhatsApp platform. It is on the WhatsApp platform. So you can open that one too. And then you have access to that one. Now, when you talk about the epistles, I have uh, made mention that we have general epistles and we have the Pauline epistles. 